Um, my name is Kathleen Fitzpatrick. I'm talking about transformation. Um, last year was the first time that I came to SES, which, if you recall, was focused in part on the social life of books and reading, um, which is a topic that's been of huge importance to me over the last several years. Um, last year here, though, I found myself a little bit distracted as I was in the middle of considering a really enormous career change. I had spent the previous 13 years as a professor of English and Media Studies at a small liberal arts college in Southern California, and just before arriving here, I had been offered the job that I now have, completely out of the blue. And I mean really, really out of the blue. The job didn't actually exist um, that I was being offered. And so um, I am now waiting Slides. There we go. The organization that I work for had a long-standing book publication program, a long-standing journal publication program, and those, you know, had been around, as you might guess, for a long time. They did what they did with the kind of efficiency that those programs work with, but they were starting to feel the pressures of the 21st century as younger scholars, and I don't necessarily mean that as a chronological designation, um, but one that's more about mindset or methodology we're starting to demand new kinds of access to the products of scholarly research. And they were also demanding support for new kinds of scholarly work, right? um, expanding traditional modes of communication in the humanities beyond the book and the journal article, the traditional products of publishing, right? to include instead crazy things like blogs and Twitter and other kinds of digital archives and databases and visualizations and mapping projects and a whole range of other modes of scholarly communication that we haven't even yet begun to imagine. So this was a challenge that, as it turns out, I couldn't resist. Right? Um, not least because I'd spent a few years before thinking about how to transform communication among scholars in media studies, um, who were themselves still very focused on the book and the journal article as the mode of doing their work. Um, and so founded Media Commons, which is a platform that attempts to provide these scholars with a range of tools that are, enable the production of new kinds of scholarship with a range of weights and time signatures and forms of mediation um, from the blog post through what we think of as middle state publishing all the way up to the monograph, um, all of which are presented in open, malleable, discussable formats that are intended to produce some kind of deeper interaction between the scholar and the media object. Um, I've also, at the time, had been working on a book project called Planned Obsolescence, um, Publishing Technology and the Future of the Academy, which I had released um, a couple of years before online for open peer review, and which is now at last out in print from NYU. Now, here's the thing. I'm a humanities scholar, right? An English professor by training, which you can tell by the fact that most of my slides are just words. Um, but there's, and there's been a lot of talk um, around a certain kind of cultural studies professor for years about the desire to be a public <coughs> intellectual. But these scholars, even the ones who want to be public intellectuals, have you know, until very recently almost never actually done their work in public. And the idea of pr approaching an English professor and saying, hey, let's find out if your research actually works in the real world is kind of shocking. Um, so I was not to put too fine a point on it terrified. I mean, what if all of these ideas that I had um, turned out actually not to work? What if I got rid of the safety net of tenure um, and discovered that I really wasn't all that good a tightrope walker after all? Um, sitting here last year, though, something very fundamental about the new ecology of research and communication started to sink in, um, which is that without risk, there can be no unexpected outcomes. And without unexpected outcomes, there can be no transformation. And transformation in scholarly communication is my, my primary goal. So last year, sitting in this room, I made the decision to leave. I started my new job six months ago, and while I'm still getting my bearings, um, having spent the first six months mostly trying to figure out how things have been done for the last 40 years and why, um, I'm, I'm beginning to see the real potential for transformation on the horizon. And for instance, our annual convention, which was just last week, was wildly successful, um, if, if for no other reason than the way it began to really showcase new presentation strategies and the ways that they can impact greater communication amongst scholars. Um, we're working on a whole bunch of other cool stuff at the MLA, which is not a phrase you would have heard very often <laughs> over the last few years. Um, but I'm looking forward to being able to announce some of that stuff in the coming months. Um, but the key point of this talk is basically just to say thank you to SCS um, for inspiring and encouraging me to take a chance um, so that I can hopefully encourage other scholars to take some chances too. Thanks.